This tutorial is on how to create a sort of invisibility or cloaking or warp material. So the first thing we're going to want to do is we're going to want to go to materials and then material function. So we're just going to call this invisibility function. So then we're going to go into here. The first thing we're going to want to do is we're going to click off the output tool and click expose the library. So that's something we can actually use this elsewhere. Next thing, we're going to need two normal maps. So to do that, we're going to press T and click twice. So that gets us our texture samples, and then we're going to get we're going to get two normal maps. It doesn't actually matter what you use, just as long as they're sort of clouds or noise. Um, I'm using here some uh, free marketplace assets, which are in Paragon uh, Paragon assets, I believe. But you can use whatever you want. So next, we're going to click M to get a multiply, and we're going to hook those together. Then we're also going to get ourselves two panels. Let's P click twice and grab those into UVs. Then after that, we're going to get our text cores. So we're going to need two of those, and one we're going to set to two and two, and we're going to put those both into coordinates. After that, we're going to get a time node, and we're going to put that into time. And then we're going to get our speed, and we're going to change that to zero point zero one. In one and one and minus zero point zero one in the other, and kind of if you if you have a bit of experience in materials, you'll realise the source of what we're creating is kind of just a moving uh, board of normal maps that will sort of be like waves going up and down if you can extrapolate into a third dimension, and then we're going to get a Fresnel and pop that into the middle node, and from that of one a 1 minus x so that will basically invert it and what we've done here is we've made it so that the normal map isn't uh, isn't applied to the edges so it's flat which you will kind of realize has some advantages later on and then we're going to power and we'll just set this to 10 and then from that power we're just going to get a lerp so let's um, press l and click and we can drag this into alpha and then we're going to put those the other way around and then we can just put that into the results. Now what you'll see here is you're going to see that it is, as I said, white around the edge and they've got kind of black moving clouds inside which look very wave-like or organic and random at the same time. This is good, this, this would completely work. However, it's not such going to be very useful as we can only ha use it for one particular thing. So what we're really going to want to do is we're going to want to get some input nodes. So we get input and then we have to change this make from these vector 3 to a scalar and then we'll use preview value. This will mean that we can put an input value but it will have a default value as well. And for this, this one we're just going to name it speed and we're going to set the default value to 0 0.01 so the default is the x and we're going to drag this into the speed node here and we're going to multiply this by minus one and we're going to drag this down to here. It doesn't matter kind of what you multiply that by for instance um, it's just up to how you want to use it. So then we're going to get um, exponents here and so the exponent I think by default is going to be one and then we're going to get power here and that by default will be ten and then we're going to get maximum here, so it's going to be 1, and then minimum here, which will be 0. And we'll just put those in as well. So now you've created your material instance, not material instance, material function. Now we need to actually create the material. So we'll just create a material, and we'll just call this invismap, for instance. And we'll just pull this up. And the first thing we're going to do is we've got to set it from set the blend mode from opaque to translucent. Then we're going to get just our constant here, so let's just press one and click, and we'll just put them to opacity. Then we can call our invis invisibility function and put that into the refraction. And that right now should work. You should be able to see some very vague sort of distortion. However, we can make it better by using parameters. So we're going to get another constant, however this time we're going to convert to a parameter. And we can call this exp, so we're just going to name it the same thing, and the exponent's 1, and we'll just drag this into here. 
And now this we're going to name power. So it gets to 10. And we still name max. Put this to 1. Then we're going to name min. Put this to 0. Add those both in. And then we can get speed. Put this to 0 0.01. You can, if you want, um, have like minimum and maximum values. You'll sliders but if we just leave those both at zeros zero will be best and then from this we right click and we click create a tier instance just click off that and you have the same thing however this time you can actually edit the parameters so exponent will make it more visible minimax well it'll sort of min something you do want to change our maximum because that's tied to the edge it won't look very good if you change it too much. Nor it's nor of min particularly, but you can change the power, which will which will be how much it's distorted, and then speeds how fast it moves. Since it's doing make it say 0.186 for instance, and then we drag it onto this object here, we can see it moves relatively fast. Whereas in real time, if we change it back down a bit, we can see it moves much slower. So potentially if you wanted to, you could blend this with a opaque material and make it kind of appear and disappear.